In our money lead now, from true American icon to you're going to pay for this. President Trump doing a 180 on Harley Davidson this morning, unleashing on Twitter after the American motorcycle company announced it was moving some production overseas to avoid tariffs from the European Union. Those tariffs, of course, a response to the Trump administration's tariffs on steel and aluminum. But now President Trump says Harley Davidson won't be able to sell its products in the U.S. without paying a tax. CNN's Tom Foreman has the story. They surrendered, they quit, they waved the white flag. A Harley Davidson should never be built in another country. President Trump greeted news of Harley Davidson sending more of its motorcycle manufacturing out of the U.S. with a flurry of furious tweets. I think the people that ride Harleys are not happy with Harley Davidson, and I wouldn't be either. Little more than a year ago, Trump stood proudly with Harley executives promising big changes in trade. We have to make America the best country on earth to do business, and that's what we're in the process of doing. He channeled other presidents who have embraced the iconic company, including Ronald Reagan, whose huge tariffs on some Japanese motorcycles in the 80s were aimed at helping Harley, though analysts debate the impact. It's time to gun the engines, not put on the brakes. But the European Union is retaliating against the Trump tariffs on steel and aluminum by raising its tax on, among other things, imported motorcycles. From 6% to a whopping 31%. That's a $2,200 price hike for each Harley sold there, a potential $100 million loss for the company. The head of the European Commission has been frustrated at the whole idea of a trade war. This is basically a stupid process, the fact that we have to do this. But we have to do it. Even some Republicans are worried about President Trump's actions. I don't know what his motive is, but I know that we're playing with fire. Still, Trump has campaigned relentlessly to stop the offshoring of American jobs. I want trade deals for our country that create more jobs and higher wages for American workers. So he's pointing to word earlier this year that Harley was already planning to move some production to Thailand, as if to say, it's not my fault. So Harley Davidson is using that as an excuse, and I don't like that because I've been very good to Harley Davidson. Harley's not saying much about this current uproar, but their sales last quarter fell 12% in the U.S. while they rose in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. So sure, Harley would like to build their bikes closer to the people buying them. But the Trump tariffs and the resulting backlash have undeniably given an extra push in that direction. Jake. All right, Tom Foreman, thanks so much. I'm back with the panel. Uh, Kirsten, the president says Harley is using tariffs as an excuse. He's repeatedly tweeting about it. It seems like Harlo uh, Harley has uh, made President Trump's enemies list in a way. Yeah, and I would say for people who are you know, loving when Donald Trump beats up on liberals or people that they don't like and they think it's so funny and so wonderful and when he goes after people, just wait when he comes for you because it's going to happen. He's doing it to Harley Davidson. And I don't actually have a problem with him wanting a company to keep business in the United States. The problem for Harley Davidson is most of their business now is overseas. It's They're well, losing business here and they're gaining business in Europe. Well, what's interesting about Harley that people forget, Jake, let's just put this on the big board and think about this. 35 years ago, Ronald Reagan saved Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. How did he save it? By imposing a huge draconian tariff on Japanese motorcycles. Tariffs from Japanese motorcycles were 4%. Reagan raised it to 49.4%, allowing Harley Davidson to have a financial buffer, retool, fix some of their motorcycles, and then compete on the global market. So they were saved by big tariffs before. The, tr the, the Harley leadership is... is is solidly never Trumper, so they don't like this president. And as Chris said, they're moving, they're moving overseas where their where their supplies are. But it's it's amazing this company was saved by tariffs and now they're decrying them. But, look, but they're different a, tariffs. They're different kinds of tariffs. Well, no, different tariffs, but they were saved but by look, tariffs it's before. A, to me, it's a it's a bigger conversation. I really don't think that Donald Trump understands what he has unleashed. The Pandora's box he's opened with this tariff stuff. I live in Florida. I can tell you, hurricane windows, 20% higher because of the threat of these tariffs, because of the imposition of these tariffs. That is all of the East Coast and all of the Gulf Coast. You're talking Harley-Davidson, you're talking what? Wisconsin, a state that was oh, so very important to him. And Pennsylvania, <laughs> another crucial state for him. And, and, you know, he takes such personal affront to this uh, corporation. I mean, it'd be nice to hear him talk about uh, the dictator in Turkey or the dictator in North Korea or maybe Putin in the same terms that he uses against an iconic American company.
And one of the other things that's interesting about this is that there are some powerful people associated with uh, Wisconsin. Uh, uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, for one. He doesn't uh, care. And you hear these kind of, you know, rote comments about how the Speaker doesn't support tariffs. He doesn't think it's, you know, it's it's the way to the future. It's the right, right. The right step for the economy. But you don't really see these people, at least in public, fighting for these companies. Right, because they don't want to be the next person on the Twitter feed, right? They don't want to be, have him coming after them. And obviously, the voters are behind him. 85 to 90 percent of Republicans are squarely behind Donald Trump. And th they see... they. They see that, and they're not obviously also not profiles and courage. Look, right, the Republican enablers are, are at fault. Look, I, I think it, it was it was Bob Corker just a few weeks ago who was calling this a cult because they wouldn't stand up to Trump on tariffs. If look, you can't get Republicans to stand up against tariffs, yeah. you can't get Amer them to look, stand Amer up Americans on anything. What fair trade? They were treated fairly across the globe. That's what people are looking for here. Not fr not free fair trade.